Hey guys, and welcome back to Rage Gaming, and very soon, Season 5 of Diablo 4. With each new season, we always see new changes to the leveling and progression path, and so this time is no different, with a new season story, the new Infernal Hordes mechanic, Helltide updates, and more. For this video then, my aim is to provide you with the information you're going to need to have a smooth leveling experience, an idea of your leveling path, and what to expect going in. So we'll start with the big one, the newly increased bonus XP. What this specifically means is the increased XP you get from killing high higher level enemies compared to your current level has changed. Essentially, you're going to get increased XP for killing an enemy higher level than yourself. That XP increase gets bigger per the gap between your levels. Newly, this will cap out at 30 levels above your own compared to the former 10. I would love to give you concrete numbers on the XP increase this is actually going to provide, but in the Season 5 patch notes, they specifically do not give them. It only tells us that you're going to get more XP in Season 5 for killing a monster 30 levels above your own. So we think this generally means that if you can handle higher levels without slowing down a noticeable amount, that'll be optimal. It means when you enter World Tier 3 early and are under leveled at first, the XP gain will be even better. Not only because entering World Tier 3 actually increases your XP value as normal and again at World Tier 4, but because these big level gaps will be even more valuable now as you first enter these stages. Now previously, we'd see the world record levelers eventually spam Nightmare Dungeons at tiers just beyond their own level, enemies that might be five levels higher than the current. This was about right because there wasn't a lot of value for going higher and then you would slow down your progress, which certainly wasn't worth it. In this new system, we might find people pushing higher tiers as they go then, could be worth it, but again, only if you're not slowed down too much. Now in terms of leveling as fast as possible, here's the general outline that we were doing last season. In short, Helltide Reborn was the main method, and you could engage with it straight away. You complete the short seasonal quest line until you were limited by its current step, then head into Helltide, completing every event possible, as long as possible. Very importantly, you'd be saving your cinders until the end of the tide, since you get more XP for opening the chests when at a higher level. Then at one point you break off to go complete your class quest to get your class passives going at around level 15 or 25 depending. Then continue back into Helltide and the season story until you're ready to beat the capstone, which we did even earlier last season at about level 35. Once you were in world tier 3, you'd just be farming Helltides again and maybe some nightmare dungeons until the world tier 4 unlock, which we did at level 54 very easily. Then it was just nightmare dungeons around the Helltides and other classic content for gearing up all the way to level 100. Throughout that leveling, you'd gain Smoldering Ashes from the Battle Pass, and you'd use them to max out the urn tied to Monster Kill XP first, as a reminder. So we're expecting a very similar path this season with new changes, so we're going to cover what those are. Since we just highlighted how important Helltide Reborn was for our leveling path in Season 4, let's talk about what's changed for that in Season 5. First up, the profaned Mind Cage consumables are back, and we're limited now to three stacks at once. Each Mind Cage consumable will increase the enemy's level by 10 while you're in the tide, but in exchange you get increased cinder drop rates and threat gain. With the new XP system, that's going to be even more valuable, and so that's probably why it's capped at 3. With 3 Mind Cages active at once, you'll be dealing with enemies 30 levels above your own, leading to the max XP you can gain while in the Helltide. They've also changed the Whispers tied to it a bit. In Season 4, those Whispers were a bit weird and awkward. The locations and the progression within the subzones hard to actually track. They've stated that those whispers are going to be easier to complete, tied to one subzone, and now will always lead to 10 grim favors, so it should be a lot smoother. Then we also have the interactables, like the new ritual to summon the maiden. For that, they adjusted the baneful hearts needed for the maiden summon, seemingly making them more common. But in world tiers 1 and 2, you're only going to need two of these hearts instead of three to activate the ritual, which will be nice. Finally, the tortured gift chests are going to be cheaper in world tier 1 and 2, making them even more valuable. It'll be 75 cinders compared to 100, at least that's the example they gave. So that's the Helltide. What about the new seasonal questline? Will that be important and more involved? Well, while we definitely do have a new questline to do, to my surprise, it sounds like there's again very little to it. In fact, they themselves compared it to the Iron Wolves questline, but slightly more to it. Frankly, in my opinion, it was mostly just a rep system and a very forgettable final battle in characters. So hopefully there is indeed more to it. In any case, the way it will work is tied to the new rep system more specifically. It's been described as our journey back to hell to take on the Infernal Hordes. So so hopefully it'll be cool, but how will it work differently? Here's what we know. The new rep system is going to be very familiar, but with some nice quality of life improvements. Our new rep system is being called the Mother's Gift, and fantastically, we can actually increase rep almost anywhere in the game. Instead of having to farm one specific type of content, like in Season 4, we were just in Helltide. Fine at first and for leveling, but long term in Endgame when you had to reach max rep, it was a nightmare because you had to be in the Helltide for way too long. 
Hopefully with this change, we can continue the grind most anywhere then without actually thinking about it. But also earning that reputation is more valuable too. Apparently earning rep will now grant experience to improve our leveling part, making the rep farm actually worth doing during the grind. Since we can progress it most anywhere though, it should just feel like we're getting more XP in general for playing normally. Now in terms of those new seasonal quests, they're going to be unlocked at stages during the reputation system rank specifically. Quest ranks are shown by the new green exclamation points when you're looking at the current reputation system. Overall though, it's the usual reward system otherwise, legendaries and uniques for specific builds, with the final tier giving one resplendent spark, similar again to the season 4 version. But let's talk about new mechanics, like say the new Hellbreach dungeons. These are a new event style dungeon, and they're going to be very similar to Infernal Hordes, but shorter and sweeter. You earn currency to spend on rewards at the end, and apparently they're going to be good reputation farms, even though they do seem to occur randomly. They do sound small, like I say, comparable to short sellers, as whispers we have in the open world, but if they're good reputation, they'll be well worth doing. But the big new mechanic is obviously the new Infernal Hordes. These are described as the new endgame content for Season 5, a wave-based game mode where you hold your ground and then fight waves and waves of enemies, comparable to various events we've seen in the game. To make that more interesting though, it gets harder as you go and you're limited on revives like in a nightmare dungeon. After each wave clear, you then make a choice to choose extra powers, bonuses you're going to get, but this is to choose between three different offers. One is providing a positive, but then there's also going to be a negative with that. The idea is to let you choose what you're aiming for, what you know rewards you actually want, then what are you willing to put up with in the following waves as it begins to stack and stack and get harder. It'll all end with a final fight against the Fell Council, which are basically multiple big bads with different attack types to be aware of. When they're defeated though, you can use your stormed up burning Aether, the new currency, to get summoning materials for bosses, guaranteed greater affix drops, uniques and legendaries too. It seems very much worth farming, especially for greater affixes, which are going to drop every time. Now to do them, Infernal Hordes are said to be unlocked in World Tier 3, after completing a quest line there. We go back into hell and unlock it while we're there. Then when it's unlocked, we're going to need the new infernal compasses to access it. These can scale the horde tier, increasing the difficulty alongside the rewards all the way up to tier 8, which apparently will go up to tiers 9 and 10 later in the season. In regards to getting them compared to the PTR, we can get them more frequently, which is nice. Found in high tier nightmare dungeons, high tier pit runs. They can drop in hell tides and also from whisper caches. And it says in the patch notes that we're going to be able to craft them at the occultist, costing forgotten souls and sigil powder. Also, we should be able to salvage these compasses for sigil powder too. So in general, compared to the PTR, it's going to be a lot easier to get them with a broader range of options. Compared to the PTR, they've also improved the rewards in general and quality of life stuff like the waves going faster and you'll be able to collect the aether easier. Lastly, here are just some extra details to be aware of. The experience rewards for side quests, including priority quests and class quests, those have been increased. So things we're generally doing to unlock things always should be worth more, which is certainly nice. Though I still doubt side quests are going to be worth doing if you've done your Renal. They've also apparently increased legendary drop rates, which is nice. CC is more forgiving, meaning you can use potions while you're stunned, and the overall times for CC are down to 1.5 seconds on average compared to 2.5, which is very nice. Other cool stuff like enchanting, no longer needing angel breath at all. And funnily, world bosses will now be harder to kill, though we'll see how true that ends up. Apparently, greater affixes are going to have extra temporary rolls in Season 5, since it definitely hurts to brick those, you'll be getting more chances to get what you want. And if you are somehow not aware, they've rebranded uber uniques to mythic uniques, making them kind of more stand out as important, valuable items when they drop and when you look at them. That's alongside the massive unique changes they've made across the board. But yeah, there you have it. That's everything we think you need to know for Season 5's new leveling and progression path. Seasonal story whenever possible, Helltide Reborn to grind to World Tier 3, where we're going to start engaging with the new Infernal Hordes. We'll be doing those alongside more Helltide until World Tier 4, where we begin that true endgame grind of Nightmare Dungeons and Infernal Hordes, and all the other normal content to get materials and the basics of that. Only now, killing enemies up to 30 levels higher than yourself is actually worth it. So we'll be trying to push the limits of what we can kill, only not doing that when it's slowing us too much. And lastly, anything and everything that's giving you seasonal rep, that should be prioritized so that we can unlock the seasonal quest sooner and get those juicy rewards for actually completing it. I do hope this overview gave you the information you needed. And if there's anything you'd like to add, you can drop it in the comments. Maybe it'll help someone. For now though, I've been Hollow, you've been you. I'll see you in season five. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is...
Uh, goodbye. <laughs>